morning. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Have you ever had a day when you worked all day and your feet hurt and your back hurt and you're like, geez, I worked so hard today. I've been on my feet all day. And then when you think about it at the end of the day, you think to yourself, what did I even do today? <laughs> I had a day like that yesterday. I spent all day canning up these beans. We had bought two eight pound bags of pinto beans. So we like to use them for baked beans and we like to use them on chili. But I like to get them canned up early so that when Eddie wants to make chili, he can just grab a jar of beans, pour it in his pot, grab a jar of this and a jar of that, throw them in the pot. And he doesn't have to worry about cooking the beans all day or soaking them overnight. So that's what I got done yesterday. 19 jars of beans for chili and seven jars of baked beans. We ate one last night, so I only have six left. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes? You can something up and then you eat it. Anyways, I thought I would show you this morning what we canned up from the summer garden. So as you saw, here's the six jars of baked beans we have left and the 19 jars of beans for chili. Underneath my sad looking broccoli plants, we have all tomato sauce. Eddie likes that for his chili. Under there, these are all the pears that we canned up from our tree and the neighbor's tree. We eat at least a jar a week. So those are dwindling, but we still have over 36 jars there. And then up here in the top in the dark, we have some Satsuma marmalade that I made last year. We have some wild plums that I make jam out of. Those we picked in Colorado the year before last. Then we have some more chili beans up here. There's 11 in there. That's why I had to make up some more. These three boxes are spaghetti sauce. I like to make spaghetti sauce ahead of time instead of trying to make it when we're going to have spaghetti. We have two jars of greens. That's all we got this year. And we have one jar of chicken broth left but I'll be making some more. I have some chicken bones in the freezer, which I'll be making chicken broth out of. Down here, we've got one, two, three, four, five jars of diced peppers. Now these diced peppers are all different. Some of them are pure Anaheim's. Some are a mix. Uh, a lot of them have a jalapeno mixed in, just one jalapeno per jar. And he likes to use all these peppers in his, in his chili. Then over here, we've got lemon juice, the fresh squeezed lemon juice from our lemon tree. We've got 13 jars of salsa left. We've got this box here plus one jar over there. Down here we've got green beans in these two boxes. These are quart jars and there's just two pint jars in there. I don't know why I did pints, but anyways, those are green beans. We've got carrots. We ate a lot of fresh carrots and you got to remember, we've been eating this food ever since we canned it. So, but we didn't do great on the carrots this year. We need to plant a lot more. We've got peas. We've only got four jars of peas because Ocean and Eddie hate peas. And then we've got some dried peppers for stews, some sunflower seeds, and some home roasted peanuts. And the bottom shelf is full of pickles. <laughs> I always make too many pickles. This is the worm bin that makes the compost for the garden. Well, not compost. They make worm castings for the garden in order to get the garden to grow good. 
we still have to plant the fall garden i have planted a little bit of it i planted some green beans i've got a couple of tomato plants in but we have a lot more work to do for the fall garden and today it's supposed to be raining we have an 80 percent chance of rain this afternoon eddie had to run to the store when he gets back we'll figure out what we're doing today and hopefully get started before it starts raining so let's see what we're gonna do well the first thing we're gonna do is put the new chicks into the chick house you gonna help all right so we have to dip each one's beaks in the water and then set them down by the food oh my gosh look at them they are so cute mm -hmm. Yeah, this one isn't moving. Hey, stop beating your legs. I have to turn this chick around, otherwise you can't grab him. Seven. Yeah. Eight. Ow. Nine. Oh, scratch me, too. Yeah. 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 Ten. Yeah. Get it. Why is it picking Eleven. up the ground? I did put them on their backs when he was reeling. Yeah, he got them. I had to look at the chip. Hey, 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 hey. You can't get the freak in there when you're doing you through them yourself. Yeah. Two more to go. <sighs> My arm hurts. One more. Come on, chicken, 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 chicken. Come on, come on, dip. Hope we got it in there. Okay, so we got the chicks all set up in the chick house. They have a heat lamp, and I might find something to block some of this chicken wire just from the wind. It's plenty warm enough outside for them. It's still 90 degrees during the day, 75 degrees at night. Now we need to see if we can get on to one of our other jobs before it starts raining. So let's see what we do next. And we're at the sawmill. Okay, let's get this bed extension put together and put on to this. Now, I don't want to move the sawmill in order to attach it. So I think we can attach it to this end and then just slide the head down the beginning. Plan for today is to put the bed extension on and then mill up a log and see how the bed extension goes. And after that, I'm going to tell y'all exactly what I think of this Woodland Mills sawmill. So stay tuned for that. Came with more feet. Right, Got another log clamp with it. All right, that's the bar to put the clamp on. Ha ha. Ha. We got another log dog. Now it's a good thing we got this dog because I've cut into ours. Log bunk. Another log bunk. And two rails. Two bolts down from the top. Those holes don't line up. Was it just because I'm not square? No. Huh. That's not good. See? Look. They don't line up. I'm going to have to call Woodland Mills because this isn't going to work. Okay. Thank goodness for Woodland Mills technical support. 
we were, I was trying to do this wrong. So we have to take the bunk off of the, the end bunk off of the existing mill and put it on this end and then take one of the new bunks and it goes there to attach the old rail to the new rail. So they're so helpful. They didn't even make me feel like an idiot, which I feel like. It's not that heavy, it's just a little too heavy for me. Okay, so the joiner plate goes underneath, like so. I think, like so. Yeah, let's put it that way. I like that much better. And then this is one of the new bunks. And these will go one hole on this rail, and then the other hole will go on the other rail. Just like that. Okay. Yeah. How many legs do we have? Or feet? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it would be one, two. What do we do? Put two side by side right here on the end? Yeah. Or, yeah, because one there, one there, and then one here. Mm -hmm. So each one gets two nuts. Okay. And then we'll go in the hole and get another nut. Oh man, I did it wrong. They all need another nut. I messed up. It gets a nut there, and then it gets a nut here. And then it gets another nut, so the two nuts are sandwiched together on the rail. That's the way it goes.
Okay guys, we got this 22 to 24 inch log somewhat cut up. It was 22 inches on one end, 24 inches on the other end. I cut four by four or four inch slabs because we're gonna make our skids. We're gonna make them out of four inch thick. I think we're gonna do, because of the width of the board, we're gonna do four by five and a half. We were gonna do four by six, but It'll work better four by five and a half because then I can get three of them out of one plank. So the part that you all have been waiting for, what do I really think of this Woodland Mills? Well, I'd like to give you some really good information that we found out after using it for a while. First off, when you buy the mill, they tell you that it will cut 10 foot four. And it will, but if you don't have a tractor, it's a lot of work. We've been cutting right about 10 foot four logs so that we have extra room to square up the ends because we need 10 foot lumber. So let me show you. When you put a 10 foot log on your bed, you have to get by, you have to get by these foot, these feet right here. So you have to bring your log down here and you roll it on well then, in order for the blade to go all the way through it, once you roll your log on, you have to push it down so that it comes up closer to the blade. So it has to come past these feet and sit up in here. That's the only way you're gonna cut a 10 footer or a 10 foot four. You might be able to squeeze 10 foot exact, but I don't think so. Now, if you had a tractor, you could just pick it up over those feet and set it on there and you'd be okay. So if you're gonna buy this mill and you need eight foot lumber, no problem. But if you need 10 foot lumber, you really need to get the bed extension if you don't have a tractor because it is a lot of work, especially doing these great big logs. Now with this bed extension, we can cut, just rolling a log straight up, we can cut a 16 foot log that's just rolling it up, not having to slide it down towards the blade or anything. We can very easily do a 16 foot log. So we only need to do 14 footers for the bedroom, no problem. We can roll it up, not worry too much about where it's sitting because we'll have an extra two feet and just mill it. This log that we just milled was 11 and a half feet. We didn't even think about that because we put the extension on. Before that extension, we would have had to measure this out, make sure it was no more than 10 foot four, and then cut it off with the chainsaw. But this is 11 and a half feet, and I didn't even think about it. We just rolled it up there, not even knowing what the length was. Okay, now I've had a couple of other questions. My neighbor, for one, he asked, how hard is it to push the sawmill through the log? Well, with a good sharp blade, it's not hard at all. Sometimes, depending, now it does depend on how big your log is, but sometimes, you know, one hand, walk beside it and it'll go, no problem. Now with these great big logs that we're doing, it does take a little bit more effort than that. It takes, you know, two hands, but it's still not hard to push. Now when your blade is getting dull, it does get harder and harder to push. So it's not hard to push at all. That answers my neighbor's question. Now, another question I had was about the blades. We've been finding, because I have a bad back. I had, I had spinal surgery back in 2015 and I can't push hard. I can barely walk half the time. But because of that, I need a good sharp blade on the sawmill. So we're getting two, two and a half, maybe three logs out of one blade. Now, if you're a guy or you're a strong woman with a strong back, you could probably get, supposedly you, you should be able to do quite a few, like five, six, I don't know. Um, now our blades we get from Cook's Saw Manufacturing because they're here in Alabama where we are, so we can just drive there. They are between 15 and $16 per blade. We buy a box of 10. I think that's the only way they come, but I'm not sure. When you look on their website, it's a box of 10 blades and it says between 150 and 176, I think. I'm not sure. We paid 150 something 
or 160 for our box of 10 blades. So that's how much the blades are. And like I said, they will do, for me, they'll do two to three logs per blade. These are great big logs, you gotta remember. And that's a lot of wood for these blades to be going through. If you're doing a lot smaller logs, I'm sure you could get a ton more. We haven't done any small logs, so I can't speak to that. Now, I do think the nine and a half horsepower motor on this is strong enough. We have thunder. With the huge logs that we're doing right now, yes, it would be better if we had a bigger sawmill with a bigger motor. It would probably go through it a lot faster. But because we're not gonna make a living at this, I feel that what we got was plenty. I do feel that the nine and a half horsepower is plenty power for a weekender or somebody that, you know, is gonna mill up what's on their property if they don't have 20 acres, you know. But if you're doing it for a living, then I think you would need a bigger sawmill. Um, it does take a long time to level it. After we put the bed extension on, it took forever and a couple of rainstorms to get this thing leveled. I'm hoping once we put it on the skids and we level it up, I'm hoping we don't have to level it more than once because the skids should help it to stay in place. Right now, without it on the skids, it does get knocked out of position when we load the logs. Um, I can't really think of anything else. If you have any other questions about the mill, leave me a comment and I will try to answer you the best I can. It's starting to storm here, so we may or may not finish up these planks today, but I want everybody to stay safe and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching everyone.